be solved for C sub n. So C sub n is equal to C sub b minus n C sub b over 1 minus n. So I have 1.0047 times minus 1.6 times 0 0.7176 over 1 minus 1.6. Or I get that C sub n is equal to plus 0 0.2391 kilojoules per kilogram degree K. So again, this is a made up number, but it enables us to do the analysis, and I get that Q is equal to substituting in 0 0.5 times this 0 0.2391 times the delta T 248.6 or I get that Q is equal to 29.74 kilojoules. So I see that when I add the heat and the work together, so when I add the heat and the work together, I'll get delta U. So if I went back, if I look at the first law, Q is equal to delta U plus W, if I I've solved this, so now if I didn't use the C sub n, so if I didn't use the C sub n, and I use these values, I'd have Q is equal to delta U, which was, where am I, 89.19, and W was equal to minus 59.45. I would see that Q is equal to 29.72 kilojoules Close enough, the difference is round off here. Now we're going to introduce a special case of the polytropic process called the reversible adiabatic process. In this case, Q is equal to zero. And what we want to do, and we have a special case going at PV to the N is equal to a constant, and what we're going to do is find out that N has a certain value for a reversible adiabatic process. In the text, this is developed one way. I'll develop it here another way, and the result is the same in both instances. It's, but if I use the first law, Q is equal to delta U plus W, then I have M C sub N delta T is equal to zero, is equal to M C sub V delta T plus M R delta T over one minus N. And so what we do is the the M and the delta T goes out, the M and the delta T goes out. I know that R is equal to C sub P minus C sub P. And we find that N is equal to C sub P over C sub P. Is equal to K. So in chapter 5, we said the ratio of the specific heats was K. And so now, for reversible adiabatic process, we have that PV to the K is equal to a constant. So I can apply all the equations I had for the reversible adiabatic, for the polytropic process to the reversible adiabatic process. And when it says it, it tells you N is equal to K. You can look it up in table A1. You know where to find it. Now let's introduce what we need for an open system, so we can apply the same rules that we have now for not a closed system, but this knowledge, PV to the N, it can be small specific volume to the N. So I could have PV to the N is equal to a constant. Now let's look at an open system for a polytropic process. I have Q dot plus n dot E1 is equal to W dot plus n dot E2. In this case, we don't have a simplified form for Q dot. So I can solve for W dot in terms of an open system. So I have for an open system polytropic, so I have PV to the N is equal to a constant. I know that W dot is equal to minus n dot 
DD penny. I can I can solve for V, and so I can take this information. I'm going to put it in here and solve the equation for the power. The book goes through all the various steps. We're going through one step. So it's n over n minus 1 times n dot r t 1 times 1 minus p2 over p1 to the n minus 1 over n. And so this gives us the power. This gives us the power. So I have this term right here. I have my E term, which is mostly delta H, but if I have kinetic or potential energy there, and I use the first law to solve for Q dot. So the methodology typically is, if I have to solve for the power, I do that. I know that delta H is here, and I use the first law to solve for the heat flow. Let's look at an example of a reversible adiabatic process. For an, for an open system. So we're going to have air, going to have a, a compressor, receives two cubic meters per second of air at 300K, 100kPa. We're going to compress it so we'll have power going in. We're going to have, be reversible adiabatic. So in this case, there won't be any heat loss, and it leaves 600 kPa. And what we want to do is find the power that's required. So what is this to make this happen? We don't know, so let's find out. So I, can, I know it's an open system. The substance is air. It's an ideal gas. So I have PV. PV dot is equal to M dot RT, just a different way to write it. The process is P specific volume to the K is equal to a constant. So we have a reversible adiabatic process, ideal gas, open system. So we know how to go about this. So when I look at this equation, I want to apply and find the power this way. So part of what I want to be able to do is to do that. I'm also curious in the uh, exit temperature. So T2 is equal to T1 times P2 over P1 to the K minus 1 over K. Same, same equation except I substituted in that. And K is equal to 1.4. So if I do this, T2 is equal to 300 times 600 over 100 to the 0 0.4 over 1.4. So this is equal to 500.5 degrees K. So that gives me my exit temperature. I can get, I'm curious about my mass flow rate. This is volume flow rate. I need mass flow rate. I can apply this. Notice in this equation, I need mass flow rate. I could replace this by P1, V1 dot. So truly, I don't need mass flow rate, but eventually I'll, I typically need it, but I could apply the ideal gas law there. And so the mass flow rate is equal to P1, V1 dot over RT1. So this is 100 times 2 divided by 0 0.287 times 300. And this is equal to 2.323 kilograms per second. So that gives us the mass, so I converted that to mass flow rate. And now I can substitute in and find the power. So the power is equal to K over K minus 1 times M dot R T1 times 1 minus P2 over P1 to the K minus 1 over K. So I can, I can apply that, and now I'm going to substitute in all the values. 
1.4 over 0 0.4 times 2.323 times 0 0.287 times T1 300 times, we're going to go down here, 1 minus P2 600 over 100 to the 0 0.4 over 1.4. And so I can solve for the power, and the power turns out to be minus 468 kilowatts. So that's, that's the power that had to go in to compress this gas. Now someone might say, do I have to use this equation? Could I apply the first law equation? And the answer is yes. So I can, apply the, I can always apply the first law equation, and it applies for... I did reversible and irreversible processes. So now let's see if life was easier if I applied the first law equation. I want you to see how this goes. So now if I apply the first law equation, <coughs> we have Q dot plus M dot E1 is equal to W dot plus M dot E2. So reversible adiabatic, that goes out, the power is equal to m dot times e1 minus e2. And if I neglect delta k e and delta t e, e1 minus e2 is equal to c sub p t1 minus t2. And if you substitute in, I have the mass flow rate, I have c sub p, I have this, we get the same answer. So I get that W dot is equal to 2.323 kilograms per second times C sub P, 1.0047 times T1, 300 minus T2, 500.5, and we get minus 468. So sometimes, if I have a reversible adiabatic process, it's easier to do the first law to get the power. If it's a polytropic process, I have to use the general equation. So for homework, so that it's just not me talking and you watching, so that you can apply your knowledge. So for homework, look at problem 613. 633, 635, and 637. 